of the Opposition, Keir Starmer. Thank you, Mr Speaker. The Tory party chair says that public services are in pretty good shape. (laughs) Has the Prime Minister met a single member of the public who agrees with him? Prime Minister. Mr. Mr. Speaker, Mr. Speaker, because of the record investment that we're putting into public services like the NHS, we're now getting waiting lists down. Because of the reforms that we've made to our education system, more children are studying in good and outstanding schools. Because that's what you get with a Conservative government more funding, more reform, and better outcomes for Britain. He's living in another world to the rest of us. People waiting more than two days from an ambulance because they broke the NHS. Yeah. Only one in a hundred rapists going to court because they broke the criminal justice system. Yeah. A record number of small boats crossing the Channel because they broke the asylum system. Yeah. People can't afford their bills, can't get the police to investigate crimes, can't get a doctor's appointment. Does that really sound like pretty good shape yeah. to him. Yeah. Yes, well, mi- <laughs> Mr Speaker, what's the record? Since, since 2010, since, since, since 2010, crime down by 50% under the Conservative yeah. Government, Mr Speaker. 20,000 more police officers, we've given them more powers and we've toughened up sentencing, all opposed by Sir Softy over there. Yeah. Mr Speaker, Either the prime order. order. Our constituents want to hear the question and the answers. What I would say is, we, you will progress questions beyond. The prime minister wants to leave early, along with the leader of the opposition. Help me to help them. Yes. Mr. Speaker, either the prime minister doesn't use the same public services as the rest of us, yeah. or he simply yeah. can't see the damage they've done to our country. Yeah. In 2019, Ariel Lee, a convicted people smuggler threw boiling water over a prison officer, leaving him with first-degree burns. The prison officer said it felt like acid. His face was on fire. His attacker was found guilty, received a prison sentence, quite right in my view. Does the Prime Minister agree? Mr Mr. Speaker, while record is clear on sentencing, it was this party and this government that passed the Sentencing Act last year. It toughened up sentences, and the average custodial sentence has now increased since 2010 by almost two thirds. For child sex abusers, it's up by 15 months, and for rapists, it's up by two years. And when our Sentencing Act ended, ended the automatic early release of offenders who pose a danger to the public, it was the Labour Party who voted against it. Well, the, the problem is, Prime Minister, Ariali's sentence, Ariali's sentence ended up being suspended. Yeah, yeah. And anyone watching this would wonder why someone who violently attacks a key worker isn't behind bars. Well, the court judgment spelt it out. It's because it took 16 months for the attacker to be charged. That's ridiculous. And it took another two years before he was sentenced. Completely unacceptable. Can't the Prime Minister see that because they've lost control of the court service, because they've created the largest court backlog on record, he's letting violent criminals go free? Mr Speaker, Mr Speaker, here's the record. We're cracking down on grooming gangs and he's he's uncomfortable, Mr Speaker, he's uncomfortable addressing. We toughen the law on sex offenders so they spend longer in prison. He voted against it, Mr Speaker. And we've increased rape convictions by over 60%. Meanwhile, he meanwhile, he he attended, he attended 21 sentencing council meetings that water down punishments. That's why they call him Sir Softy. Soft on crime, soft on criminals. Mr Speaker, I've prosecuted thousands upon thousands of sex offenders. He's just shown he doesn't understand how the criminal justice system works. No wonder he can't fix it. 
and, and, and he thinks that cracking down on crime is suspending a sentence where someone should be in prison. Yeah. That shows the problem. Yeah. Yeah. And another reason, Mr. Speaker, another reason cited by the court for suspending the sentence in Ariel Lee's case was a letter from the Justice Secretary in February about prison overcrowding. As a result of that letter, courts have been told to have awareness of the impact of current prison population levels when passing sentences. In simple terms, the wrecking ball the Tories have taken to criminal justice means that thousands of people who should be in prison aren't. The court also said he shakes his head, he should read the judgment. The court also said that it's for the government to say when prison conditions return to a more normal state. Now, I know the Justice Secretary has been busy trying to save his own job rather than actually doing it. But has the Prime Minister asked him when he's going to get a grip on the prison system and withdraw that letter which is allowing criminals to walk free? Mr Speaker, we're in the process of building 20,000 more prison places. That's what this government is delivering, because we're toughening up sentencing and putting more people behind bars and making sure that our most serious offenders spend longer there. But I, I love it when he talks about his record as a lefty lawyer, Mr Speaker, because I was looking, I was looking at this, because when he was there, I read, he's quoting things, I read that people were really disappointed that his organisation let down victims. That, that wasn't even my assessment. That was his shadow attorney general. I want to get through these questions, so do my constituents. If there's any member whose constituents they aren't interested in, please leave the chamber. Keir Starmer. Well, Mr Speaker, uh, when I was in office as Director of Public Prosecutions, those benches my greatest supporters. In 2013, the Home Affairs Select Committee said, uh, we would like to commend the work of the Director of Public Prosecutions, Keir Starmer. He's striven to improve the treatment of sexual assault. They go on to say... Can we... Prime Minister's questions matter to our constituents. I, I wonder if I were you. It's not the day. I want to get through it because I'm trying to help the Prime Minister and the Leader. You're not being helpful. We'll hear this question no matter how long it takes. Keir Starmer. Mr Speaker, this is 2030. Order. <laughs> Ms Stevenson, I've heard... I've heard a few weeks... This is the last week. I suggest you quiet, or it's better you leave. Keir Starmer. Mr Speaker, this is the Home Affairs Select Committee in 2013. They go on to say the work I did should provide a model to other agencies, or when he leaves the CPS, he will be missed. Now, that report was presented to Parliament by the then Home Secretary, future Prime Minister, the right honourable member for Maidenhead. And the government, those pinches, noted and supported it. Now, it's obviously always a good look to have your work recognised, although they did lay it on a bit thick. So perhaps, perhaps the Prime Minister spend less time trying to rewrite history and more time sorting out the mess he's made of criminal justice. Because the crisis in criminal justice is just a snapshot of public services collapsing under his watch. People can see it wherever they look. Our roads, our trains, the NHS, the asylum system, policing, mental health provision. The Tories have broken them all, and all they've got left is excuses and blame. Now, I know the Prime Minister would rather talk about a maths lesson than the state of the country, but perhaps he could solve this equation. Why, after 13 years of a Tory government, are patients waiting longer than ever, criminals walking free, growth non existence, and why, everywhere you look, does nothing seem to work at all? Prime Minister. Mr. Mr. Spe Mr. Speaker, I, I, can't, I can't quite remember, but I think he started by talking about when he was DPP in 2013. Uh, and I'm, 
I'm actually, I'm, a, I'm actually glad he brought that up because there was something else that happened when he was DPP in 2013. And, and that, was, that was when he got his own special law, Mr Speaker. I've got it right here. It's the, the, pens, the, pensions, the pensions increase. It's the, the pensions increase for Keir Starmer. Order. Uh, uh, I, just a moment. <laughs> Can I just say, I, order, I expect both sides to listen to the questions and the answers. Prime Minister. Mr Speaker, it, here it is. It's the, the pensions increase, pension screen for Keir Starmer, QC, 2013. Now, while we're, while we're introducing a transformative policy to support doctors, doctors to cut the waiting list faster, he wants to raise taxes on public sector workers. And it's literally, it's one law for him and tax rises for everyone else.